Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So today I want to take a look at a paper that talks about the beginnings of a pretty big shift in computing and that is finally the arrival of non-volatile memory. Non-volatile memory has been eagerly awaited for more than a decade, but finally we see Intel bringing a viable solution to the market in the form of its Optane data center persistent memory modules. While Intel certainly seems to have the lead in this area, it's expected that soon there will be a bunch of competing offerings in this space. So this paper takes a look at the performance characteristics as well as the various different ways that one could use non-volatile memory. But specifically, it takes a look at Intel's Optane solution. So what's the big deal? What's all the excitement about? The characteristics of Optane are that just like RAM, it supports byte level access. And while access times are slower than DRAM, they are about the same order of magnitude. And of course, like the name suggests, it is non-volatile, so it persists across reboots and power outages. The novel thing then about the solution is that it has created a new tier in the memory and storage hierarchy and it sits between flash drives and RAM. It is slower than RAM but much faster than SSDs. And the prices are such that you could have a huge amount of Optane memory in your system sitting between RAM and flash disks. The authors ran all their tests in this paper on a machine that had three terabytes of Optane memory. But of course, in addition to that, there's a twist that this is non-volatile. So at an architectural level, from the point of view of the entire software stack, it is not just a new level in the storage hierarchy, it is also blurring the lines between storage and RAM. And all levels in the software stack, operating systems, runtimes like the JVM, and applications themselves will need to change to take full advantage of the characteristics and performance of this new solution. So in terms of the architectural basics, Optane from the outside looks and feels very much like DRAM. It sits on the same memory bus and connects to the same memory controller on the CPU. Intel's new Cascade Lake architecture contains a couple of new instructions that help with utilizing Optane. So why do you need these? You need these because there are times when you need to make sure that what's in RAM is persisted back to non-volatile storage. And so you have some new instructions, for example, that write back the data in the CPU's cache lines, but without invalidating it. Now, there are two major ways or major modes in which you could use Optane. The first one, which is called memory mode, is the simpler one. And this is where you just pretend like Optane is a much larger pool of RAM. You're not really making use of its non-volatility. To the CPU and the operating system and all the apps running on your computer, it just looks as if your machine has a huge amount of RAM. Of course, Optane RAM will be slightly slower than DRAM. This is also sometimes called cached mode. The other mode, and this is where you're actually making use of the full capabilities of Optane, is called app direct mode. And in this mode, the Optane memory module to the operating system and to applications appears as a separate persistent memory device. You could install a file system on it, just like you would install a file system on a flash drive, but you would have fast byte level access into this persistent storage as opposed to block level access that storage drives usually have. To applications that made use of this, it would almost be as if their runtime in-memory state were fully persisted 
across restarts. Now, obviously, that is a lot of work in terms of rewriting or re-architecting those applications, but it also offers the biggest performance gains. Now, let's get into some of the performance benchmarks. The authors found that random reads on Optane take about 300 nanoseconds, which compares to about 80 nanoseconds for DRAM. There are some caveats with respect to measuring write latency, but it's a much closer race for writes. The write latency is around 94 nanoseconds for Optane and 86 nanoseconds for DRAM. When you look at memory bandwidth, you can see in these graphs for reads and writes, the orange line is for DRAM and the blue line is Optane. You can see that read and write bandwidth again is much lesser than DRAM as expected. The Optane memory module, in addition to having non-volatile RAM, does have a small amount of traditional RAM used as a cache. And when you use Optane in just memory mode, where it just looks like a large amount of slower RAM, that cache comes into play. Here we see some benchmarks of applications simply using Optane in memory mode. And we find that when used in cached mode, using Optane instead of regular DRAM does not really deteriorate the performance of the spec benchmarks. However, if you turn caching off, you can see a noticeable drop in performance, and that's expected. Now, that might very well be because the working set of spec benchmarks fits within the cache, and this result might not translate to large real-world applications where the working set is much larger. Next, we look at some benchmarks that actually use the non-volatility of Optane. One simple thing you could do is use some of Linux's file systems like XD4 and XFS in direct access or DAX modes. And in such a case, the Optane module essentially shows up as a block device and you can treat it as a very, very fast flash drive. And finally, we come to the most interesting way to use Optane, which is to use it in an application aware manner where the application treats it as byte addressable persistent memory. So you could map that directly into your memory address space and access it just like RAM with byte level loads and stores. Now obviously this is much harder to do than just treating it like a regular file system because like I said before it's as if when your application shuts down and then restarts, it has all its persistent state available to it. And so you have to re-architect the application to be consistent in the face of that persistence. But in some initial benchmarks, you can already get a peak of some of the performance gains to be had. They see for Rocks DB performance increases of 3.5x. So all this is just the beginning. It's just scratching the surface. This is exciting because non-volatile memory is a new slot in the memory architecture and we haven't had that since DRAM and since Flash really. And there will need to be a lot of work done at all layers of the software stack, the operating system, various language runtimes and applications themselves if they are to take full advantage of this new technology. So that was a quick look at some of the performance characteristics of non-volatile memory and in particular Intel's Optane solution. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.